I've realized there's so many people that are renting houses uh, from landlords. They don't actually understand what is their uh, right and what they are actually responsible for. I just actually uh, had a struggle with uh, some of my tenants uh, uh, with regards to this issue. So I decided let me make a video and clarify what tenants are responsible for and what is actually their right or what they should actually do okay so welcome to this week's session let's get to it shall we so of course a tenant uh, must uh, the first one is of course a tenant must pay uh, the rent at an agreed frequency normally in in most cases it will be on a monthly basis okay so uh, some might be weekly some might be every two weeks it depends but in most cases it will be a tenant must pay their rent on a monthly basis okay so also the the tenant must only use the property they're renting for what it's supposed to be used for like the property usage might be residential might be an industrial or whatever but they must only use the property for only what they must use it for according to uh, what you will have on the lease agreement so depending if you are staying on the house if you are running a business if you are doing whatever but you must use only the property for that that you have leased it for which will be residential which will be industrial which will be whatever that you have actually rented it for so that's what you must actually use okay and the other thing is that the property uh, the the tenant is liable for any damages that they've caused during their stay so if they've damaged the property uh uh while they're staying there then they're liable for the cost of repairing that property so it is very much important that you as a, someone that wants to rent clearly understand that is something that you need to cover so that means that you really need to make sure that uh, when they do an incoming inspection you check everything the condition of the house that everything is okay so that when now you do the exit inspection you compare between the two and you make sure that you actually don't damage the property right or what was already damaged before you entered is now being blamed on you so it's very much important that you actually understand that right so another thing to note is that the water and electricity account is the 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 obligation of the tenant because they are the ones that are pay uh, using these things they are using the water they are using the electricity in most cases it will be on the account of the tenant but in some cases rare cases it might be just included on the the, the rental amount as well right in cases uh, in some cases i don't know what will be the reasoning for that but in some cases but very few cases right so the other uh thing is that the tenant must deliver the property to the landlord on termination of the lease in the same condition that it was taken when they actually occupied it. What it means is that the condition that you get the property in is the same condition that you must give it back when you, when it's time now for you to move from that property, right? in cases where the condition before and the condition after is not the same you will be liable for the damages that you have caused on the property in most cases the landlord will what they will do is that they will charge you a deposit at the beginning of the, the lease and then that deposit will be held normally in a trust account and then after doing an exit inspection that's when it's determined whether you get your deposit or you forfeit it or you lose some of it depending on how you treated that property so it is must be clear that you understand these things right 
so what are actually the costs that the tenant is actually responsible for right of course the personal living expenses water electricity gas usage and telecommunications these are what are the living expenses that the tenant uses so the tenant is responsible for those costs right the tenant is also responsible for the refuse removal right the owner or the landlord has the right to include the review uh, the removal of your rubbish in the rental amount as well but it is up to the landlord what they decide okay and the cost of sanitation which is the removal of the gray water and the toilet waste of which the tenant is the has a direct benefit so that's why the tenant has to cover this cost okay and the general wear and tear of the equipment components such as light bulbs such as uh, top washers filters all sorts of consumables that deteriorate as a result of tenants use thereof it means that the tenant must cover this cost because he's the one that is having a direct benefit of that instead of the landlord so that must be clear right and then any damage that is caused to the property as a result of the negligence from the tenant side it means they must cover that cost as well all right and things like maintaining the garden the garden swimming tennis courts, such as fixtures unless it is specified on the uh, lease contract then okay maybe an exception can be made so i'm sure these things are not uh, foreign to to all of you and it's very easy to understand right and then the other thing is that uh the insurance on personal belongings so that is the things that are inside the property it means the tenant themselves must actually uh, uh cover those things not the landlord the landlord covers the insurance of the building itself right not of the things that are contained in the house like furniture and also uh, all those kind of stuff so it is very much important that you understand that if you have watched until this far i'm sure this video have had some value uh, if you are a, a tenant or if you are a, a landlord that is renting out some properties out there so please please and please again subscribe to this channel share with your friends and like right and you can also follow me on all social media i am tawang manenje I peace out.